Welcome to Literacy Live. You want to know what's happened in the real estate market? Then this show is for you. I'm your host, Matt Literacy. Okay, so today we are talking about buying and selling during the holiday season. The holidays are right around the corner and everybody is asking, what do I do? Do I stop buying? Do I stop selling? So today we're going to answer a lot of the questions that kind of came in on this type of stuff. So what type of real estate trends do you usually see during the holiday season? I see a slowdown in the marketplace. Uh, a lot of people get busy during the holidays. Last year was a little bit different because uh, we were in lockdown mode. Uh, I don't anticipate us going lockdown mode this year. Never say never. But I do think that the trend I'm going to see is that a lot of people are going to go on pause that are buying. They're going to wait till the next year. We're going to see a lot of sellers decide to throw in the towels and pull their properties off the market, and that is going to lead to a decrease in sales. Uh, is it a bad time to sell? I never think it's a bad time to sell. Never. I never think it is. However, it depends on what you're selling, you know, how long you've been on the market, et cetera. It's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. It will all be relative. Do a lot of sellers pull their homes off during the holiday market? Yes. Yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people, you know, uh, you know, people that celebrate Christmas and, you know, all the other seasons, they have a lot going on. And they just don't want a lot of people, you know, going through their house, especially with there still being a virus out there and things of that nature. So, you know, it's, it's, it is something that we see people decide to kind of throw in the towel. Not everybody, but it is something that we do see. Uh, should sellers still decorate their home? Absolutely. I would 100 percent. So I would I encourage you to make it as Christmas like as possible. Uh, I think it looks amazing when a house is decorated. I would make sure that you get your pictures first and then decorate. But otherwise, I don't see any problems in decorating at all. Should you get photos taken before decorating for the holidays? Just answer that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Do not get photos with your holiday decor up. Are a lot of buyers shooting their homes now to prep for holiday season or new year? Uh, we are getting a lot of people to shoot their places now and then listing like right after the first of the year because, you know, it, the weather still you know, well, and, and the sh uh, sun is still shining and, you know, it's, it's still nice out, but you know, at this time next year, you know, it's going to be kind of crappy uh, or not this time uh, in January of next year, it's gonna be crappy out. So people are trying to get a leg up. And also a lot of people are shooting it as soon as they can, because yeah, I mean, you know, for about six weeks there, you're going to have your house filled with Christmas stuff and you don't want your house looking like that, you know, in March, it's going to look kind of dumb. Is holiday season a good time to buy? Holiday season is a great time to buy. Uh, there's like almost not probably about a quarter of the demand that you normally deal with and you could get good deals, um, for places that have been kind of sitting around, but then after the first year, the market kind of goes crazy. So it is a good time to buy. Uh, do you get a deal when buying during the holiday season? I mean, sometimes, you know, but you also don't have as much pressure as a buyer. So that's a good thing about being a buyer during holiday season, you know, for sellers, you know, you could be the only option. Like we're a big city, people people get relocated. So like, you know, buyers could get maybe a, a, a semi good deal, but also there, you know, may only be four properties to choose from because inventory like really dwindles. Should you keep your property on or off during the holiday season? Here's what I'm gonna be suggesting all my clients to do. It's going to be a case by case basis. So if you're watching this, you're like, well, you didn't tell me to do that. You said to do this. It depends on what you have. It depends on how many showings I'm getting. It depends on how long I've been on the market. It depends on what the market conditions are like for your type of property. And it depends on what I anticipate is going to happen in your little area. For the most part, probably half of my listings that have been on the market for a very long time, I'm going to suggest that you pull your property off the market and you live in the pocket games, okay? Meaning you're on Zenlist, the private MLS and you're on TAN, which is top agent network. This way you are able to be seen by people searching in pockets, but you're not collecting market time. And then we'll go on towards the end of January and reset the market time. So you look fresh for the new year. But I would say if you come off the market and live in the pocket game, I'd give you about a 10% chance to sell. Okay. Uh, if you're on the market, I will give you a 15 to 20% chance to sell. So I know what you're thinking. Hey, Matt, sounds like it's better odds to stay on the market. It is. It, uh, hunt, like, no doubt it's going to be better to be on the market than off the market. However, if the market's really not there and it's a low percentage, and let's say we may give you a 90% chance to sell after the first of the year, 
I think I'd rather come on after the first with a property that's going to be looking fresh. And that's going to be something to kind of think about. Does the Laracy team have any holiday traditions? Yeah, we have a uh, Christmas party every year. And uh, I think we may uh, start some sort of Friendsgiving here. Uh, but otherwise, those are the main ones. But every year, yeah, we do have a nice little holiday party and it tends to get a little crazy. The morning appointments the next day can be a little tough for some, but, you know, it's Christmas season. You got to let your hair down every now and then. Is it better to wait to buy or sell until after the new year? I think if you're a seller, it's relative. I, I need to know what type of product I'm dealing with and what the market's like. You know, I really do. I, I can't make a generalized answer for that. Some, sometimes I may say that, listen, put it up. And there's a lot of my sellers that have to sell. Some just wanted a contract. Some got relocated. They got to sell. So guess what? We're going on the market today. And there's other people that like could wait. So we would say to wait. If you're buying, why well, I would definitely buy before the end of the year if I could. If the, if the right place is out there, not even I wouldn't even think twice about it. I'm telling you, like uh, there's going to be a lot more demand starting next year, and that's going to change the marketplace. When is the next? When does the real estate market slow down during holiday season? Like usually, once Turkey Day hits, it starts to slow down. Like what, Turkey Day is like the day things start to kind of change. We're still super. Listen, every single year in my entire career, I've sold properties on Thanksgiving every year, and I sold properties on Christmas every single year. I sold properties on New Year's Day every single year. You know, I remember last year on Christmas Day, I sold three properties, two of which were on the market for over a year, and the reason we sold was because we were the only ones pretty much on the market and people had to buy. And guess what, guys? Not everybody celebrates Christmas. I love Christmas. I celebrate Christmas. But there's a huge population that doesn't celebrate Christmas. So guess what? On Christmas Day, they don't got anything to do. My phone rings more on Christmas Day than any other holiday of the year, hands down. My least amount of calls on a day is New Year's Day. Um, I'm always away for New Year's Day because of that. Is there less competition in our holiday season? Yes. There's less competition for both buyers and there's less competition for sellers as well. Buyers, you're, you're, I'm telling you, it's, it's at least a quarter of the demand. It might be a fifth of the demand. And then all of a sudden, January 4th this year, which will be that first Monday back, you're going to see it quadruple, like overnight. It'll be like a blink of an eye. And then we're going to see every cocky agent. We should keep this clip because I'm telling you right now, everybody's talking about how slow it is, blah, blah, blah. January 4th is going to hit. And every cocky agent out there is going to be like, oh, my God, can you believe how busy it is? Like the craziest market ever, blah, blah, blah. Like how does this change? It happens every year. It's demand. You know why? Chicago's most rent-heavy city in the sea, uh, country. Most people's leases come due end of March, April, May, first part of June. So people come back from holiday. They're like, holy shit, my lease is up April 1st, and my building just told me I have to let them know 60 days in advance, which is, guess what? Let's do backwards math. That's March 1st, February 1st. So by February 1st, they have to tell them if they're moving out. So they come back and they're like, oh shit, I got to buy. And then uh, there's nothing on the market because the average consumer thinks the best time to sell is April and May. So we go from a low inventory market low demand to a low inventory market and high demand and things go crazy. Spring starts in January, guys. We will be doing a podcast as we get closer to do our annual spring in January podcast, but buckle up. It's going to happen. And for sellers, I would say a minimum of 50% of listings come off the market, probably more depending on what it is. And guess what that means? There's still people buying and selling. It only takes one, just one person, couple, whatever, to want to buy your place. So yes, it is a great time to try to take advantage of the less competition. Who is typically buying during the holiday season? Somebody who either wants a deal, an investor, or my super busy clients. Once after the first of the year hits, most people's businesses pick up. So a lot of my CEOs, my luxury buyers, most of my luxury sales come in the fourth quarter. And we're in the fourth quarter right now. And guess what? I have the most luxury sales I've had all year in the last two weeks. So it happens every year. It's just I just tend to see, and I ask my guys, like, well, I don't know, it's kind of slower for us in the fourth quarter during the season. So I feel like a lot of the richer people kind of slow down. I also see entry-level buyers whose leases are up in March want to get a leg up on the competition and start looking now. How can you tell if a buyer is serious during the holiday season? I mean, you can't. You can ask them if they got uh, pre-approvals, et cetera, if I represent the seller, but you just never know. I mean, the one thing that drives me nuts is that most of the time, buyers getting looking for properties at this time, most of the time, they're serious. So that's the one thing I always say about how these seasons that buyers typically looking are really serious buyers. But we're in a big city, so every now and then you get a guy that's, you know, visiting his cousin, and he's always like, yeah, I want to see this place in Chicago. And then, like, we show it to him, and it's like a complete waste of time. So that happens. Like, with my own buyers, I'm, I'm not taking out buyers during holiday season unless they're pre-approved. If you can't get pre-approved and you want to buy, you're, you're not a buyer. So if you're looking at this, watching this, and you're like, hey, I don't want to get pre-approved, get approved. Takes two seconds. 
It literally takes 10 minutes. If you want to buy a property, take the 10 minutes out of your day and get approved and show you're serious. That's it. It's not a big deal. It's not being rude about it. It's like just doing the basics. Your step number one should be understanding like what you can afford. Is it harder to get showings during the holidays? It's hard to get showings in our listings. I mean, my sellers, if they're selling during the holiday season, I mean, they're, they're, they're looking to sell. I would say that like some agents are hard to get a hold of. I say a lot of agents check out in the fourth quarter, a lot. And it's, it's tough to get into the listings. I would say that right now we're batting about 50% of getting into the, the listings that we want to get into with our buyers. And I think it has nothing to do with the sellers. And I think it has everything to do with uh, the agent itself. So if you're out there watching this, work with someone who doesn't miss showings. We, we, we notify. Our sellers know the second we get a showing request, the same time we do. I, I would love it if other sellers knew how often they miss showings. I can almost never get into properties recently. People, buyer, uh, agents just tell me how busy they are, but yet there's no sale. So I know what it is. We're just out getting hammered. Do in-town buyers travel to Chicago to look at properties during the holiday break? Yeah, absolutely. We sell a lot of in-town stuff. We sell a lot of international stuff during the holidays. Typically, my, my biggest quarter for international happens during the holiday season. Are agents less busy during the holiday season? Absolutely. It's not even close. I mean, this is going to be the slowest quarter uh, out of the three for the year. It's not saying it's going to be like terrible. It's just saying it's the slowest of the three. So yeah, people are, are slower. And honestly, a lot of people, if they made, not, not everybody's driven by numbers like we are. So a lot of people are just like, hey, if I made a decent living for the year and I don't really need any more money and they don't think ahead, they'll check out during the winter season. I know a lot of agents that go sell in like warmer climate during this time. Um, what is the literacy holiday, holiday season st uh, strategy for business? We're trying to encourage our buyers to make a decision before the end of the year. I, I think any buyer that makes a decision before the end of the year is going to end up calling me in March and thanking me for that. Um, and we're trying to tell our sellers a case by case basis, whether or not it's, uh, the, the best move, uh, to stay on the market. And that's a conversation we're having with our clients over the next few weeks. Why list during holiday season if it's slower? Um, there's not much competition. And, you know, there's a lot of stats out there that say it's actually a really smart move to list during the holiday season because there are people who are out there buying and there's a lot less people uh, to compete, a lot of less sellers to compete with. Again, though, I, I actually think it's a really good idea to list if you're just coming on or depending on what product you're in, uh, if it's good to buy or not. I mean, listen, or, or to list or not. I mean, listen, I've gotten a few multiple bids in the last couple of days. I haven't seen them in a while. So you just don't know. Yeah, that's the other thing is you just don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a gambling game almost going on. It depends on what the product is, and that'll depend on whether or not it's the best strategy to go on the market. Does the holiday season slow the lending process down? Not really. Uh, like lenders that aren't really good at their jobs kind of take their foot off the gas so it takes longer. But in reality, anybody who tells you that is just lazy. So th there's there's no reason for the loan process. It's, it's not like banks are closed the whole time. They're closed Christmas Day. They're closed on Thanksgiving Day. And they're closed on New Year's Day. So other than that, they should be working. Um, how do you coach sellers during the holiday season? I just tell them it's going to suck. It does. It's slow. And you just have to know that. But every showing you get legitimately could be a buyer because people who are looking down the holiday season tend to be more serious buyers are going to buy today. I don't get as many buyers actively looking at properties who aren't buying until April next year, you know, right after the turkey day. Usually those guys go on pause. So, you know, I just tell them that it's going to suck. I just know that it's something that we have to kind of be cognitive to know that the showings will be slow, but the ones that do come in are going to be beneficial for us. How do I coach buyers in the holiday season? I tell them to buy now. This is a great time to take advantage of the marketplace before it gets crazy. And I tell them that, you know, like there's stuff that's been sitting for a little bit longer. You might be able to get a better deal on. Um, are how they buy are typically in a rush or can they just, are they just trying to get a deal deal means like, you know, they're trying to get a steal. I think what they're trying to do is, is buy before, like it's a ton of competition. And I still think next year, some areas like the downtown river North market still going to be soft. So I don't think it's going to change that much, but I do think like other areas like Lincoln park and Lakeview and some of those parts are going to be much busier. And I think that's going to kind of change the marketplace a little bit. So we're trying to tell them, you know, like I would kind of rush into this to take advantage of the market while you can. Have you ever had closings on an actual holiday? Well, you can't close on a holiday because everything's closed. I have sold something on a holiday every single year. As I stated earlier, I have got a place under contract on a major holiday. It happens every year. Kind of crazy, but I also like it at the same time. Do buyers have a rush to get into something before the holiday starts? I would say a lot of buyers have a rush to 
close before the end of the year for tax purposes. And a lot of sellers want to close before the end of the year for tax purposes as well. Is it harder to get movers during the holiday season? No, it's not. In, in fact, it's probably easier, much easier, much, 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 much easier to get movers during the holiday season. And it's much easier to move into a property during the holiday season. There's a heck of a lot less moves during the holidays. So what that does is it gives you the opportunity to be able to pick and choose which date. If you're moving in April, like you'll be lucky if you get moving, like you can get the week you want, not let alone the day. I mean, that's the busiest moving season. When is the best time to get a deal during the holidays between Thanksgiving and Christmas? Once you hit Christmas, like it's kind of done. We're, we're, we're pretty much, you got like a week of that's like people don't know what day it is. And then, you know, New Year starts and that's when everything changes. Uh, do clients call you on Christmas? Yep. But I do remember one Christmas, I, uh, I do all the cooking and I put a prime rib in the oven and drove down to the South Loop, showed a buyer a place. They bought it. It was also my listing and I made it back in time within 45 minutes and nobody even knew I left. So I got technically two sales in an hour period. So, I mean, I'll do crazy stuff, but some, sometimes you get a little short tempered on Christmas. Uh, are there tax benefits to buy before the end of the year is, is over? Yeah, there's always tax benefits for buyers, but you have to close before the end of the year. You can't just buy, you have to close. Are interest rates lower during the holidays? Typically, there's less, there's less people buying, so typically the, the uh, rates kind of drop a little bit, but you know, it, it, it all depends on what's happening in the marketplace. You know, the, the rates just recently bumped up. Um, do you have any holiday travel plans? I, I, I try to, if my wife's not pregnant, we try to travel between Christmas and New Year. So from the 26th to 1st, I'll be in Paris celebrating our anniversary, and then I'll be back to work. Will the White Castle stuffing be back this year? Absolutely. Comes, it makes an appearance every year. If you want the recipe, you can go on our YouTube page and, and watch it because we do have it on there for you. What types of homes are holiday buyers usually looking for? Um, it's all over the place. I will say, like I said earlier, luxury buyers and first-time buyers are usually the, the biggest types of buyers followed by international investors any memorable closing stories from holiday seasons in the past uh just just the one i mentioned just the one about uh leaving to go uh put the food in the oven and uh going to, and and selling the place that was on the market for a while other than that guys get prepared for the holiday season things will be a little bit slower but i do think that it's going to be a pretty strong holiday market you know, if you want to learn more about kind of what's happening in the marketplace, make sure to, you know, subscribe to our page, like our stuff, and uh, stay tuned for our next podcast. Thanks for listening to Literacy Live. Make sure to tune into our next episode and subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening to Literacy Live.